Well, hey everyone, if you're living with Hashimoto's thyroiditis and you're struggling with symptoms like anxiety and skin rashes and bloating and fatigue and just random food sensitivities, this video is for you. Today we're diving into the connection between histamine and Hashimoto's disease and why so many people that struggle with thyroid issues also struggle with histamine intolerance even if they don't realize it. So let's start with some of the basics, right? Hashimoto's, of course, it's an autoimmune disease, and this is where your immune system begins to attack your thyroid gland, and this leads to inflammation, and over time, it leads to low thyroid hormone levels, or hypothyroidism. The common symptoms include things like fatigue and brain fog, weight gain and constipation, cold sensitivity, and yes, chronic inflammation. But here's where things begin to get tricky. Hashimoto's doesn't just affect your thyroid gland. It can, it can throw off your immune system, it can affect gut health, and it can also affect histamine balance. So let's talk about histamine intolerance, right? Histamine is a chemical uh, messenger, right? It's a chemical in the body. It plays a role in digestion and sleep, immune response, it plays a role in brain function. You probably know it best for allergies, right? You take an antihistamine for hay fever or hives, but histamine isn't just about allergies. It's also found in certain foods and it's released by our immune system cells called mast cells, especially when there's inflammation or stress within the body. Normally, your body has the ability to break down this histamine. There's two primary enzymes, DAO, D uh, diamine oxidase, and HNMT. But in some people, especially those with Hashimoto's, this breakdown process doesn't work well. All right, so what's the link between Hashimoto's disease and histamine intolerance? Well, there's a few key ways that they connect. Number one is leaky gut and dysbiosis, right? Hashimoto's patients often suffer with gut issues like intestinal permeability, which is that leaky gut. When that gut barrier becomes compromised and porous, it triggers an immune response in our body and this can lead to mast cell activation. Number two is nutrient deficiencies. People with thyroid disease often have low levels of nutrients, B6, vitamin C, copper, zinc, magnesium. Again, all of these are cofactors that help our body break down histamine. So another way histamine intolerance is associated with Hashimoto's disease is really inflammation, right? Hashimoto's is driven by chronic inflammation and that inflammation can overactivate mast cells, causing them to dump histamine into the system when there's no real allergy present. Hormonal shifts such as estrogen or an increase in estrogen also increases histamine. And guess what? Many women with Hashimoto's disease also deal with estrogen dominance, especially during perimenopause or with poor detoxification pathways. So when you combine thyroid disease or thyroid dysfunction, gut problems, nutrient deficiencies, and hormonal imbalances, you can see how this perfect storm for histamine intolerance is set into motion. How do you know if you have histamine intolerance? How do you know if histamine intolerance is a part of your picture? Well, there's common symptoms and signs you should be looking for. Flushing or redness after meals, itchy skin like hives or eczema, headaches or migraines, anxiety or irritability, bloating, diarrhea or other IBS-like symptoms, rapid heartbeat, especially after eating, trouble sleeping, especially if you feel wired at night. Again, these symptoms often come and go and they can even seem random, which makes histamine issues hard to pin down. But if you have Hashimoto's and a bunch of unexplained symptoms, histamine could be playing a hidden role. Let's talk about what makes histamine worse, right? Some of the biggest triggers include high histamine foods like aged cheese, fermented foods, wine, vinegar, cured meats, and even leftovers. Environmental triggers might be things like pollen, mold, dust, or chemical fragrances. Then there's stress, with, which is both physical and emotional. Heat, temperature fluctuations can play a role. Certain supplements or medications like NSAIDs and beta blockers, um, antidepressants, and even certain probiotics can contain histamine producing strains. And remember, when your thyroid is underactive, your gut motility slows down. That means food stays in your gut longer and builds up more histamine. Well, there's good news here, right? There's good news that you can do something about all of this, right? And there's some first steps that I recommend. Number one is that you just try lowering your histamine load. Start by removing or reducing foods that are high in histamine for a few weeks. That includes, again, those things like aged cheeses, fermented foods, smoked meats, leftovers, alcohol, spinach, tomatoes, eggplant. 
What you really should focus on is freshly cooked or low histamine meals with lean proteins, root veggies, leafy greens like arugula and romaine. Number two is you want to support your gut health, right? Working on a leaky gut, reducing inflammation, rebuilding your, your gut microbiome but going, by going on, uh, ferment, by eliminating fermented foods until histamine's under control. Number three, use supportive nutrients. Consider things like vitamin C, quercetin, magnesium glycinate, DAO enzymes, B6, before, especially before meals with the enzymes. Number four is you wanna really support your thyroid when you have Hashimoto's. Optimizing thyroid function, of course, is going to improve gut motility, improve immune balance, which again, indirectly supports histamine regulation as well. So if you have Hashimoto's and you feel like you're reacting to everything, uh, even healthy foods or supplements, it's time to take a closer look at histamine, right? This isn't about finding another thing that's wrong with you. It's really about trying to understand what your body's trying to tell you, what the body's signals are, and then giving your immune system, your thyroid system, what they need to come back into this balance. Calming inflammation, healing the gut, supporting nutrient levels, reducing histamine triggers, those things filling up the histamine bucket. Again, this is all gonna go a long way. You can feel better, you can think clearly, you can get your life back. And so again, follow some of the tips that I uh, shared in, in today's video. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.